Good morning, everyone. Good morning. We are starting our drive-in worship today. Drive-in worship, and let's see how we're doing so far. Got a few more coming in, but the parking lot is full this morning with everyone here. More people coming. It looks like we got more coming down the road there. Good morning. Drive in church today. We have a crowd. Looks like someone brought their dog. Oh, there's my wife. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Faces I don't necessarily recognize, so that's nice. Wave to everyone. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all today. Hello. Hello. We are packed. And that is wonderful. We are going to get started hopefully at 1015, but if people are still rolling in, we're going to give them a few minutes to get here. And that won't be a problem. Lots and lots of people showing up today. Thank you to everyone who is signing on. It is a beautiful day here. We've got, as you can see here, uh, the wind is just blowing. The sun's out, but we got some shade put up for us. It feels beautiful today. We are so glad to be here. So glad that you're able to join with us online. We're hoping this works out well with it being online and in person here. Um, at the very least, you'll be able to hear me talk, hopefully, but I'm hoping we'll be able to hear the whole service. Uh, if you are somebody who gets our e-echoes regularly, you can get on there and find our order of worship. That'll kind of help you keep uh, alongside us or, you know, have an idea of where we're going. Um, a lot of the hymns we'll be singing, you should know. So it shouldn't be too bad. We should be able to have it, have it done pretty well. All right. I don't see anyone else in queue to come up, so we may start on time. Good morning, good morning. Rich and Lori, glad to see you here. I'm glad you could join us online. Good morning, here's our wonderful collector, hander outer, Lori. <laughs> morning, Tim. This lot is packed this morning. We hope everything goes well, of course, and we'll get lucky and no technical issues will happen. I'm glad to see all these people here. I'm glad to see you guys on here with us. We're hoping for a beautiful service. Hey, can you have my mic on? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. I hope you can hear me. If you can hear me and your radio is working, turn on your windshield wipers. And just leave them on for a second. Anyone else? Can anyone else hear me this morning? Give a honk, give a wave, give, give something that tells me you can hear me. All right. That's a few people. Hopefully that's everyone. Wonderful. Glad to see you today. I'm so glad you could be with us. Good morning. I'm joining from home. Sue, it's great to see you on here. I'm glad you could. I know you would be here in person if you could be. So I'm glad to see you. Hey, Larry. We are packed and we are ready. We have... Another minute or so, looks like a few people are getting sat down, set up. I'm running into stuff as I'm trying to talk. <laughs> but we'll get going here in just a minute. 
Maybe we'll have Tim. Tim, do you want to play us into something and then we'll get Bill up here to start going? Yeah, I don't have anything other than my hymns. Okay. Well, then we'll just uh, we'll jump right in here in a, in a minute. Do you have music playing? Huh? Do you have music yeah, playing? Yeah, okay. Music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. Okay. All right. Is it live right now? This is live. No, oh, no, the mic is live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, close. I gotta hear you. Yeah. I had to watch out for that earlier. <laughs> Mics are live. Everything's live. We are live this morning in the parking lot. And here on Facebook Live, it's great to see everyone. I think Lori is about done. Oh, we got another, we got someone else. It's a good thing we didn't start yet. We don't want to miss you. Sorry for all of you who are kind of sitting on here patiently waiting, but we are going to start very soon. All right. Oh, we got one more coming up. Yeah, it's a good day. It is a beautiful day. Yeah. All right. Connie, good morning. Getting a two-way watch in this morning. For those of you who don't know, Connie's here in person too, so... Dog's here. That's the Ziggler's dog. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we can we can get started. Wait, am I starting? I think so. This is just all you. Actually, what I'll do. Well, good morning, everybody. They must hear me. I heard some good mornings. Welcome to First Christian Church. We're glad you've joined us here on the property for the first time in a long time. And uh, we want to say uh, welcome to everybody. And uh, I'll move right into some uh, announcements. Excuse us if there's some pauses here and there. We're all new to this. This is kind of kind of fun and interesting. So uh, on the 28th, which is two weeks from today, we'll be having a congregational vote to approve officers. And there'll be more information about that in the future. And also the uh, CMF, Men's Fellowship, will be having a meeting in the near future to decide uh, summer programming and the rescheduling of the spaghetti dinner. Uh, let's see. Not a lot of other announcements because we've been on hiatus for a little while. So I'll move right into uh, some holidays, which I know you all love. Yesterday, you missed uh, National Weed Your Garden Day, so I, I hope you're up to date on that. Today is, Tim missed it. You got some work to do, buddy. <laughs> uh, today is uh, Flag Day, so I hope you got your flags uh, flying. And uh, June 15th, which is tomorrow, that is Smile Power Day, so show the power of your smile tomorrow. Uh, June 16th is Fresh Vegetables Day. Make sure you get your fresh vegetables. And the 18th is Go Fishing Day. It is also, coincidentally, International Sushi Day. So those things go together. Uh, June 19th is National Kissing Day. And uh, June 20th is National Ice Cream... <laughs> I, I wrote it down here wrong. I'm trying to remember what it is. It was uh, Ice Cream Soda Day. It's also National Bald Eagle Day, and it's World Jugglers Day. On this day in history, in the year of 1900, Hawaii became a U.S. territory. Later on, it became a state in the 50s sometimes. Uh, let's see here. In 1919, uh, the first nonstop transatlantic flight took place. In 1949, <laughs> a monkey rode a rocket into space, thereby becoming the first monkey in space. Did you know about that, Tim? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Good to know. 
I feel like you're my Ed McMahon all of a sudden. <laughs> I kind of like this, you know. Uh, let's see. On uh, a 1954, uh, United States President uh, uh, Dwight Eisenhower signs a bill into law that placed the words under God into the United States Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, let's see. On this date in 1959, the Disneyland monorail system first operated in Anaheim, California. That was the uh, first monorail system in the Northern Hemisphere. Or in the, in the Western Hemisphere, I guess. Let's see here. Um, births. Births. Let's see. In 1905, Arthur Davis, American animator, worked with uh, Looney Tunes and Hanna-Barbera. He was born on this day. Burl Ives, American actor and singer. He was born on this day in 1909. Uh, the founder of Pringles was born on this day in 1918, Fred Baer, American chemist and founder of Pringles. On this day in 1946, Donald Trump, the American uh, president, was born on this day. And in 1949, Harry Turtledove, American historian and author, was born on this day. Now, I must admit, I don't know who that guy is. I just thought his name was cool, so I added him on this list. Um, also, Kimberlyn Smith's birthday is today. All right. I think I covered it all, right? It sounds about good. I think that's it for announcements. Uh, we'll move into the call of worship. Uh, remember to be loud out there so I can, I can hear you replying back. Call to worship today. Are you hungry and tired? Come to the one who feeds and provides rest. Are you hurt or sick? Receive from the one who can cure and heal. Are you searching for meaning in your life? We come to be in the presence of Christ, who is all we need. Please join us. I would say rise, but you're already in your cars. <laughs> Please join us in the uh, hymn of praise, I Love You, Lord. morning to everyone. It is great to see all of you today, to see so many smiling faces, so many beautiful people. It has been, it feels like ages since I've been able to see some of you, so I'm glad you are here. I'm glad you've decided to join with us uh, on this worship. This is new for 
all of us, I'd assume, I personally have never attended a drive-in worship before. I've gone to drive-in movies, but this is new for me. So you'll notice that some things are different and the worship may not feel exactly as it has felt before, but we wanted to try to keep as many of the key elements of our worship intact while also uh, making it a little quicker and conducive for those who are sitting in cars the whole time. So I thank you for uh, going along with this and, and being with us during this time. We want to start now into a time of prayer. This is a time, as many of you know, that in our worship services are so important to us because it allows us to uh, really come together and it allows us to uh, lift each other up in all that is going on in each other's lives. So this is a time of prayer. For those of you joining with us on the Facebook Live, you can send in prayers now. Uh, everyone else, I had put out a, a me Facebook message asking you to send me your prayers beforehand. Uh, and if you were unable to do that and you're here this morning, uh, please make sure you uh, get us your prayers in some way and we'll try to get them on the list before Sunday. Today we want to continue to remember our shut-ins, those who are near and dear to our hearts. That's Ann Baldwin and Lauren Little, Opal Dietz and Carolyn Grimm. I got a wonderful phone call this morning from Carolyn who uh, sends her love and hugs and, and misses all of you and wants to thank anyone who's given her a call or sent her a card or reached out to her. Uh, she wants to say thank you. We want to continue to remember prayers for Rich Wilhite, who is dealing with jaw pain and all of the uh, tests he's going through with that. We want to lift him up today. We want to continue to pray today for Sue Clark. Sue has been uh, going through cancer treatments and is uh, still going through that. She's actually with us this morning on the Facebook Live, and we just lift her up in prayer. May she recover quickly and be through these treatments fast. We continue to pray for Sue's granddaughter, Mindy Billings' niece, uh, who is also going through cancer treatments and is going through uh, quite an aggressive cancer. So we want to lift her up this morning and, and pray that God continues to uh, raise that family up. We want to pray today for Flora Jo Larson, who has been uh, transferred into hospice care and is unfortunately not doing so hot right now. So we want to lift up Flora and Ken and, and the whole family as they are uh, with her in this time and, and helping her along in this transition. Many of you may know, and some of you may not know, that uh, Tanya Tyler, our, the interim pastor before I was here just about two weeks ago, uh, fell during a hiking accident and broke her leg in a few places. So we want to lift up Tanya and uh, the uh, surgery that she went through. She said that went well, but now she's recovering from that, and we uh, lift her up and pray that she recovers quickly. I have a prayer request here for the family and friends of the apartment fires in Sterling. As some of you know, that there was uh, unfortunately a few lives lost, and one of those was a young girl who had attended this church uh, and youth group and had come here. And there's been more apartment fires, I believe, since then. So we want to lift up all those family and friends of those affected by the recent fires. We want to pray today for uh, Rachel Camacho's mother, that's Robin Moresi. She's recovering from surgery right now, so we want to pray that that recovery goes well and goes quickly. I had a prayer request sent in for Mike Wylan. We want to lift Mike up and, and all that he is facing and, and pray that God is with him. And we also have a prayer sent in today for Maureen Tapia. Maureen had uh, knee replacement surgery on the 8th. She said that she's feeling very tired right now, not as, not as much pain, but uh, she is... Uh, Quite fatigued from that surgery so we lift up Maureen today. I invite everyone now to please join with me in a moment of prayer. God I thank you this morning that you have brought us together once again you have given us this opportunity to worship together Lord we know for many of us this worship is different and new and, and, and could be uneasy for some but Lord we pray that the, the joy of being together today may brighten our spirits, may lift us up, may give us the strength to continue to go forward in this time and to live out our call as disciples in the world. God, we just pray for your love to surround us, to guide us, and to always bring us to new life. God, as we have gathered this morning, we are praying for those who are so near and dear to the hearts of us here in the church. We lift up our shut-ins today, God, Ann Baldwin and Lauren Little, Opal Dietz and Carolyn Grimm. May you be with Rich Wilhite today and the jaw pain he's facing, Sue Clark and her granddaughter in their fight with cancer. God, I pray for Flora Jo as she is in hospice care and, and in this final stages of life. And, and we pray for her family as they are guiding with her on this transition. 
Lord be with Tanya Tyler and her recovery from surgery uh, from the break that she had. God be with that family and the friends of all of those who have been affected by the apartment fires here in Sterling. May you lift up Rachel's mother who is recovering from surgery. And God be with Mike Weiland and Maureen Tapia. And Lord, we pray today for all of those who have gathered this morning, for anyone who has prayers on your hearts that were not able to be shared this morning. We pray for you and for those uh, who have prayers that they maybe are not ready to share yet. We pray for you this morning. We pray that God may lift your spirit up, may guide you, and that God may help you in whatever you are facing today. Lord, we pray all of this together today in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to invite everyone to please join with us now in the next hymn, that is Seek Ye First. turning that I'm sorry people in mine yes it is Chris a beautiful day nice to see all these faces here today our first scripture reading will be from Psalm 116 verses 1 through 2 and verses 12 through 9 I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications because he inclined his ear to me, therefore he will call, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord and presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant. The child of your servant girl, you have loosened my bond. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord. In your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Our second scripture reading this morning is coming from the book of Matthew. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 9, verse 35 through chapter 10, verse 23. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned the, his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers and cast out the demons. You received without payment, 
give without payment. Take no gold or silver or copper in your belts. No bag for your journey or two tunics or sandals or a staff. For laborers deserve their food. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who is in it is worthy and stay there until you leave. And as you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet as you leave that house or town. Truly, I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to the councils and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you at that time. For it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and a father, his child, and children will raise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in the town, flee to the next. For truly, I tell you, you will not have gone through all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The word of God to the people of God. <clears throat> For me, today's passage is really one of the most shocking, in a way, of the passages that we read in the Bible. You know, we talk a lot about the Great Commission. You know, that is Jesus sending out his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, right? That gets a lot of attention. We talk a lot about that. But there isn't a ton of detail in that commission, right? There isn't much on the how and the where and the when and all those things. It just says, go make disciples of all nations, right? So you kind of take that and say, okay, well, that means everywhere and everyone, right? But in today's passage, Jesus is giving us another commission. And yet commission, the commission today has a lot of detail. It's almost as if we are given kind of a step-by-step -step set of instructions on how to do this. And yet it seems so far out of our reach that it almost seems laughable in a way. Some of the things Jesus says in here that we're supposed to be able to do, to me, really almost makes me chuckle. Now today, of course, we talk about how to evangelize, right? We, we, we talk about how we, can, how we can go out and do these things. You know, Jesus is sending the disciples out with all these lists of things to do. But in our own lives, in the church, you know, that's a conversation happening all the time. How do we get out and, and attract people? How do we get out and reach those millennials and those young people and, and all those people in, in 2020? You know, what are the strategies we can implement that will help us reach people? Whatever the answer is for any given church, you know, you can take steps to do that and you can develop a strategy and try and put this whole plan together. And that's kind of unlike the first commission, but in this commission, we are given instructions. We are given instructions on what to do, on how to do it, how to turn the other cheek. And in this commission, we are being compared to Jesus. And Jesus, of course, and all of the great things Jesus does, makes it look a little easy. He went around, he preached, and he teached, and he, he teaches people, and he healed, and he raised people from the dead. He did all of those things, and when we're reading it, and as the disciples are experiencing it, it almost seems easy. It seems like he did it without effort. Now, we know that Jesus wasn't free of suffering, but he seems to face the suffering so head on and so candidly, it almost seems easy. Every obstacle Jesus faced, he overcame it all the way to the cross. And as the disciples are being passed the torch, and then by extension us, as we are being passed the torch, we really get kind of a sobering 
reality check about how this is going to go. The political, social, religious, all the different things we can list, the reality of our world today reminds us that the job we've been given isn't easy. We see Jesus' life and ministry, we, we, we examine it, we study it, we talk about it, and we, we see this ideal, this perfect, this way it's supposed to go, the way we want it to go. Jesus do all these things in almost an effortless fashion, and yet we are faced with the reality of our own lives today that makes some of these seem, things seem almost impossible. Jesus is telling his disciples, well, hey, you're going to carry on what I did. You're going to heal the sick. You're going to cast out demons. You're going to raise people from the dead. And when I hear that, I, I stop and I wonder, wait, what? We're going to raise people from the dead. Now, sure, we can point to the doctors and say, you know, doctors are doing wonderful things in the field of medicine today. And they oftentimes can bring people back from certain death. But, you know, we're not all doctors and we don't all do that. So what does that mean for you and I who don't have that ability? We see these types of comparisons between us and Jesus and we may get discouraged and say, well, I can't do that. These difficulties, they come into play. And now, you know, we could we could stop here. We could stop with Jesus saying, hey, you're going to go do all these wonderful things and that's it. You know, the way the lectionary is set up today, there's a, a parenthetical uh, set of verses, which is really the later chunk, and it, you have the option of not including that. And if I didn't include that, we could, we could end today on this note of, you know, hey, you're being called to go do these great things. Jesus says you're going to go do all these great things. Now go do them, right? But that wouldn't be right because I wouldn't be warning you then of what Jesus says next, which is, it's going to kind of suck. You're going to face a lot of hard stuff on the way. Jesus says, after he says you're going to do wonderful things, you're going to go do it, and you got to go do it with nothing. People are going to laugh at you. They're going to poke fun at you. They're going to beat you. They're going to throw you in prison. And some people, they're going to kill you. You're going to face a lot of suffering and persecution and, and some possible bodily harm because of me. So we see all of this and we say, whoa, what in the world am I doing or what, have, what am I going to do if, if this is what I have to face? How can I go forward facing this? I feel like I don't know if I can overcome it. And then you witness the disciples go through the end of the gospel story, go into Acts and further on, and they do it. They carry on Jesus's gospel. They go and they spread the gospel. And if they hadn't done it, we wouldn't be here today. He go, they go out and they do wonderful things. And some of them do face many consequences because of it. And we see them and we wonder, well, can I do that? Am I able to face all of these hardships like they did? Can I stand up for my faith the way they did today? Many of us, I think, today are a bit hesitant to talk about our faith in such a real way because we don't want to come off as that pushy Christian who's out there shoving our religion on people and, and being kind of snooty, right? We don't want to uh, push people off and we don't want to scare them away, so we, we reserve ourselves. We pull back and we, we wait and see and we try not to be too hard on people. And yet we live in the reality of this commission given to us today. Jesus says, share your faith. Not only share your faith, but share your faith to the point that you are healing people, you are curing their illnesses, you are giving them new life. So we must live in the reality of our world that we have today. And then in the reality as we have today in the call to discipleship Jesus gives us here, and find a way to combine the two. And the reality of, of church has been throughout history that ordinary people, regular people, regular people sitting in pews, have been the people who have made the most change in the world. It is ordinary, regular people who stand up for the right things that are able to make positive change in the world around them. Each one of us gathered today, each one of us watching later or who are sitting at home, with Christ in our hearts, with God on our side, has the powers to do wonderful things and change the world for the better. 
And this passage today, it reminds us, it gives us that call in our lives, that hope that says, if you don't feel like you can do it, if you don't feel like it's for you, if you don't feel like you're the one for the job, just remember Jesus believes in you. Jesus passed the torch on to you. Jesus is calling you, and now Jesus is sending you. So go. Amen. We are going to turn now to our next hymn, I'm going to live so God can use me. Please join with us. Thank you. I'd invite everyone now to please join with us in this time of communion. This is a time that is so important to our lives as disciples because it gives us this opportunity to join with Christ in some of the most intimate of ways. And it really just invigorates my soul to know that we have this ability to bring in the Spirit of God within us and allow it to fill our veins and fill our bones and really lift us up. And in a world today where there's so much negativity, you know, this for me is something I need so much of. For many of you, you received uh, these prepackaged communion cups today. And I just want to let you know, you're going to have two pieces to rip off there. You're going to have a top piece to rip off. That's going to bring you into your little wafer. And then you'll have another tear and that's going to get you down to your juice. For the rest of you who brought your own communion, this is the time for you to join with us now. We recall that night that Jesus was betrayed as he took a loaf of bread and he broke it and he blessed it saying, this represents my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took a cup, he blessed it and he said, drink for this is the new covenant in my blood. And for as often as you eat this bread and you drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until his return. Let us now pray for the bread and for the cup and then join together in the prayer taught to us by our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Lord, we praise your name today for the love you have shined upon us and the love you give us in this time of communion. God, may the bread that we are about to receive and the cup that we are about to receive nourish us, lift us up, and give us the strength to carry forward in our lives as disciples. May we heed not just your great commission, but your commission today to share our faith in a way that lifts up the lives of those around us. God, may you strengthen us, preserve us, and keep us. And may the spirits through these elements always guide us in our lives. Amen. We now join in the prayer taught to us by our Lord and Savior. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The meal has been set. Please partake together. Thank you for joining in that. And I ask you now, please join with us in our closing hymn, Go in Peace. get some honking amens. Amen. Amen. Thank you. It has been a blessing to be with all of you this morning. I am so happy to see all of your faces and uh, see all the smiles and everything that I can see. Some of you are blocked, but I, I'm glad you are here. Uh, I guess I should turn this back to me, right? Glad for all of you who joined online, for all the people who are watching. It has been beautiful to see you guys as well. I thank you. I pray that God may bless you and keep you and preserve you. God may lift you up this day in all that you are doing. And may you find in all the places you go this week a way for you to live out that commission, to share your faith, to live it out, and to go knowing that Christ has called you to this life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone, for joining with us. I'm going to give you a shot of the lot again before we leave. And we got some people today. Amen. Amen. It has been beautiful to be with all of you. Until next week, I hope to see you here. The lot looks full, but there's plenty of room, so come on out. We can hold you. We got more space. I hope to see you. And until next week, we'll see you guys. <laughs>